Situated in the middle of Western Imran, Signar is the crown jewel of the Iron Kingdoms. Signar has the largest population, the best arcane mechanics, the most resources, and the best gunsmiths in all of Imran. Despite these advantages, they are beset on all sides by enemies who would destroy her as a nation in order to take over her fertile lands and abundant resources. Her cities are among the most modern in Western Imran, and its people more accepting and accommodating than the citizenry of any of the other nations. Signar's military prides itself on having the most disciplined and best trained soldiers in Western Imran, as well as providing them with resources and equipment to overcome nearly any challenge. It has earned a reputation for defeating its enemies even while outnumbered, with an emphasis on quality rather than quantity of its infantry and warjacks. Signar's warjacks have a wide range of capabilities and incorporate sophisticated military-grade cortexes that make them highly effective, whether controlled by warcasters or jack marshals. The army has changed considerably in recent years to incorporate gains from industrialization and mechanica, and now stands at the cutting edge of technological ingenuity applied to the arts of war. Signarians are a proud industrious people due to the gutting philosophy of the spirit of Singarnian law. The average citizen enjoys a higher quality of life and freedom compared to the citizenry of other nations. Following an era of what seemed like endless war, the mighty kingdom of Signar has enjoyed nearly a decade of peace while cooperation, openness, and understanding among nations blossomed for a time into true mechanical renaissance, Signar's leaders knew that peace was only as lasting as their dedication to the strength of their national security. And so, the wide production of a purely galvanic mechanica power source, the Storm Chamber, led to nothing less than a technological revolution that would ultimately give rise to the greatest fighting force Signar has ever known, the Storm Legion. Freshly recruited arcane mechanics built upon the creations of their predecessors and the Circurium of the Strategic Academy greatly advanced, providing new foundation for their modernization of arcane warfare and its introduction, the next generation of warcasters. The people of Signar are secure in the knowledge that their cities and territories are defended by the most advanced and professional military in the history of the Iron Kingdoms, warriors and warjacks that wield the very power of lightning storms in their armored fists. The only question now is will it be enough? Modern Kador's roots lie in the old Cardic Empire. The Empire united the Cossets of the Skarsfell Forests, the Skirov of the Northern Mountains and the Umbrians of the Eastern Plains under one Kardic Emperor. Their conquest included the Rin and the Northern Fiefdoms of Tordor. However, like all other human civilizations, the Kardic Empire met its end at the Algarth occupation despite a valiant struggle against the invaders. The people of the North would rise up alongside other nations and joined the Iron Alliance against the Argoth. While the Colossal were planned to be built in Caspia, the Northerners secretly started building them in Korsk. However, a massive Argoth attack resulted in the destruction of the Colossal factories in Korsk. After the Argoth invaders were pushed back, in 202 AR, the Council of Ten convened in Corvus, the sinking city, to establish a new age. Southern nations insisted the claims of the Cardic Empire in its old borders were no longer valid, and the Northerners with no Colossals had to accept the humiliating demands, at least for the moment, 
Thus, the kingdom of Cador was born. After years of political turmoil that brought the nation's military infrastructure to its knees, Cador has begun the process of modernization in an attempt to catch up with the achievements of its rival nations. It's expanding military, harnessing the marvels of modern engineering. But the once conquest-driven Cador is a changed nation. It no longer seeks dominance, but to hold on to that of which it is accomplished. Its new fighting force are strong, but little tested, and the vast majority of its warcasters serving alongside the Winter Corps come up during the Troubles or at the end of the wars of the past decade. Now, even as Argoth raiders arrive from the sea to claim its lands, Cador is yet rising from its decade of troubles, its political will unified under the absolute authority of the Empress Anne Vanir. Cadorians look upon the wonders of their rising empire with nationalistic pride, even in the face of a new terrible war antiquated traditions and an outdated arsenal have been replaced by advanced weapon systems and a modular approach to their military industrial complex that keeps them adaptable in the face of an ever-changing hostile environment but as always the motherland's success or failure will rest with the leadership and its heroism of its officers and warcasters and with the strength of the caldorian people Driven from the shores of Imran more than four centuries ago, by the concentrated desperate efforts of the inhabitants they had long sought to enslave, the Orgoth have now returned with a vengeance, their dark host further empowered by vicious new weapons inspired by those that led to the downfall of their first invasion. Backed by savage warjacks and armed with crude but powerful firearms, and now dominated by the war witches, who once acted only in the service of the warlords who wrought the previous invasion. The Orgoth have painstakingly prepared for this conquest for a dozen generations. Despite their brutality and lack of industrial knowledge, the Orgoth have invaded greatly during their absence, tapping into the demonic power of their infernal patrons. They have succeeded in developing a new power source called Blaze that powers their weapons and warjocks with hellish ferocity. And at the apex of the impending army are the warcasters, aged souls who have led untold lives and now lead their armies of barbaric warriors, warjacks, and savage creatures in renewed conquest against the Iron Kingdoms. Contained within the unstoppable Orgath hordes is all of the power, ambition, and ruthlessness required to bring a continent and all of its people to their knees. From the ashes of the once great Iosian Empire have risen the new houses of Eldric Lords, who now reign over their kingdom of internal dusk. House Callus has emerged as one of the strongest of this new Iosian court, the enlightened Elderic who lead the house have dedicated their existences to the defense of the Iron Kingdoms as they seek to redeem their doomed people. Even while accepting their dark fate, they are served in turn by both the soulless who have joined their banner and the living seekers who support utterly their visions and dictates determined to prove its worthiness in defending the iron kingdoms house callus has positioned itself as a ready ally to any nation of western Imran that would give them fair consideration but the human nations are not so quick to accept a kingdom of undead vampiric elves whose predecessors sought human extermination, leading the Eldric House into undesired conflicts with their Imorisian neighbors. As Imran is once again imperiled by an outside aggressor, House Kellis will learn whether or not their internal souls 
can survive the tarnished legacy of their origin. I want to thank everyone for watching this video and supporting the channel. Uh, I am sorry I didn't get to cover the Brian Blood Marauders and or the newest uh, faction. Uh, there just wasn't really much lore out on them at this moment, but I will be doing a follow-up to this video. If you liked this video, please subscribe, like, and share uh, the video. I'm trying to get to my first 500 subscribers, so if you can, please, please, please uh, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. I have more videos I'm going to be putting out weekly, uh, painting tutorial uh, videos as well as lore and among others. Alright guys, thank you so much and again, stay tuned to the ARC node. Goodbye.